to the 44th Toronto International Film Festival. You lucky, lucky people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spoiler Warning Podcast. This is our Toronto International Film Festival 2019 review of Honey Boy. I'm Christopher Schneezy. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spoiler Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week on the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest film releases coming to a theater near you um, this week um, and the coming weeks. I don't know how long it's going to take to get everything out, but basically, Stephen and I have flown to Toronto to catch the very tail end of the Toronto International Film Festival. And we're going to be talking about potentially up to 16 films um, that we've seen in the last four days of the festival. Hang on to your butts. (laughs) Um, So we are going to be doing that. We're going to... Um, we may potentially slightly be breaking the formula of the podcast just to kind of get these reviews out. These might be a little bit shorter than the normal ones, um, but we wanted to be able to share with you um, what we've been saying and what we thought of the films that we caught. Um, the first episode, this episode, um, we are going to be talking about the film Honey Boy, um, which is a film that I think both Stephen and I were pretty excited to see. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, luckily, this is one that does have a trailer, so we are going to play the trailer for Honey Boy, and then when we get back, we're going to tell you what we thought of the film. Country real hard. Be a 12-year-old. Pie fight. Ugh. It's not a pie fight. Think it through. What's your mother got a job for? Just in case. In case what? I don't In case know. you fail. In case it don't no. work out. Yes, man. man. She's filling your head full of fear. I pump you full of strength. Because we're on a team, and I know you got what it takes. You're a star, and I know it. That's why I'm here. I'm your cheerleader, honey boy. Talk about my dad. Good take, good take. You did it, you did it. Good job, everybody. My dad's not the reason I drink. He's the reason I work. I'm getting Come here. Come here. Child light and walls. I have good instincts. Yeah, I got rodeo instincts. clown instincts. Well, I could never make it in Hollywood. You could if you started when I did. How do you think it feels to have my son paying me? How do you think that feels? You wouldn't be here if I didn't pay you. All right, so that was the trailer for Honey Boy. Um, it is a... Um, you know, sort of autobiographical story about Shia LaBeouf, and uh, he plays his uh, slightly abusive father. <laughs> um, that's the general premise of the film. Stephen Miller, what did you think of Honey Boy? Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. Um, so as listeners of the podcast might know, I'm kind of a sucker for this whole meta fiction. Uh, I mean... I I praised The Tale quite a bit last year, a movie of a director kind of grappling with the former abuse that she suffered as a child. Uh, The Souvenir was a movie this year that covers kind of similar territory that I liked a lot. And what Shia LaBeouf does here is something that I think is very interesting and different from other films that I've seen that try to, quote, exercise their childhood trauma. It seems like he's really coming at this with he he has some exercise and empathy that he's trying to pull where he is saying, let me portray my own father and try to show the whole of him, like not just show the negative parts, the volatility, the anger, but also show the, the place that it's coming from and the kind of brokenness that's at the heart of him. And let, like, let me try to really inhabit him and hopefully by doing that, let go of some of these demons that have been haunting me. Um, and I just think he does a brilliant job of it. Uh, I think... 
his portrayal of his father. I, we were joking before that he looks like David Foster Wallace. Um, <laughs> but like, it, it is a fully realized character, as you would expect from the son of the person who it is being, like, it, it, it's fictionalized because his name isn't really Otis, you know, it's Shia, but like, clearly he's playing his dad and he's pulling a lot of things from his father's yeah. life. Um, and I just think he inhabits his character so well and the people that they cast to play Shia LaBeouf's uh, surrogate, uh, Lucas Hedges as an adult, uh, and Noah Jupe, who was in A Quiet Place as the kid, um, both of them, I think, just completely nail Shia LaBeouf's mannerisms. Lucas Hedges especially seems to be like a slightly heightened version of the kind of self-destructive version of Shia LaBeouf that was kind of the butt of a lot of jokes in maybe the early 2010s. Um, and yeah, I just think this is such a interesting, personal, complicated story where he's he's really not trying to make it a sob story of woe is me, look at what I had to go through. He's really saying, like, let me work out this particular father who was abusive, but not not cranked to eleven, like not like the most abusive person. It's not like in every scene of the movie he's beating him up. It's not like he's just constantly drunk and belittling him. It's more of this like this subtle kind of abuse where I'm going to undermine you and undermine you, and I have to be the center of attention, and I have to be the butt of every joke, and because I feel threatened by your power, I'm going to overcompensate in a way that tries to diminish you. And, and of course, he goes on to do terrible things, and I, but I just think it's such an interesting, nuanced picture of abuse, and I think only the person who suffered it would have a right to tell it that way. Like, I would have trouble watching a movie that tries to humanize an abuser if it weren't like someone who intimately knew them who is like, this is my story to tell and this is how I'm going to tell it. So yeah, yeah, I just thought it was a beautifully made film. Uh, Shia LaBeouf didn't direct it, even though we've been talking like he did. Uh, Alma Harrell is the director there. It's just like very intimate and gentle and it doesn't, it doesn't like draw too much attention to itself. It really lets just the character work breathe and, yeah, I don't know. I, I really loved it. This is the kind of movie that I feel like is a thousand percent up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I was sort of, uh, well, uh, until we uh, last minute got, um, were able to put knives out onto the the list of films we're seeing here. Um, this was my most anticipated film going into the festival. And you know, we literally just got into the festival now. So it was kind of a thing that could potentially spoil <laughs> <laughs> the remainder of the festival. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a pretty amazing film. Um, as you've said, uh, Lucas Hedges is just like, he's channeling Shia in, in, in a way that is almost uncanny. Um, yeah. And then especially when you're seeing Shia be somebody else, um, it kind of allows him to shine as as this character in a really, really amili- uh, amazing way. And yeah, it is it is interesting what you're saying about the fact that he is portraying it because within the context of the narrative he is sort of being asked by uh like a rehab therapist Mm. to talk about his father and how his father could be sort of the cause of his outbursts and his behaviors Mm. but this film show this film is not a let me show you how my father fucked me up it is it is kind of a loving portrayal of the um, the relationship that they did have and how close they were and how intimately connected his career has been with the presence of his father. And it's, 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 it's sort of abusive, but it's also not like he, like there's a, there's a, there's an extended scene where he talks about the necessity of his father to his father, right? Like they're having like a conversation about how he's not angry at him. He, there's like a, there's this, symbiotic relationship that's going on between sort of this back and forth that they have mm-hmm. um but yeah like it, it's it's a complicated film um and it's extremely funny yeah. <laughs> um and, it, and it's a it, it's 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 something that really pulls you in and brings you along and makes it a fun enjoyable time while actually giving you good heartfelt moments that that kind of pull you in um i, I was kind of mentioning as we were walking out that just from the trailer that I'd seen, um, I was sort of expecting a little bit more expansive look at uh, Chaya's like upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, but this really chooses to, um, you know, you get a few flashes of a few different projects he's worked on um, at the beginning, which is like some of those shots you see throughout the trailer. Um, but then it's really just the this very specific moment in time um, 
when he was a little bit younger and then this moment in time when he's in rehab and it's kind of like him telling these stories and, and, and yeah i just found it a very compelling film um that i am very glad that i got to see yeah <laughs> and i i do think like it it does get at this complicated portrayal of him because as you said it's in its own weird way it's kind of a loving portrait i i think it's kind of like if the glass castle had been a good movie like this <laughs> is the thing it would have been right which is like hey my dad yeah, yeah. My dad was fucked up, but he's the only one I have, so let me tell his story properly. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, I, I don't want to spoil the ending of this movie, but it really goes out on a very bittersweet high note, kind of. of and, and, and there's a line toward the end of the movie, too, that really gets at this, where uh, Otis, Shia LaBeouf, stand-in, says, like, like, the only thing my father gave me of any value was pain, and now you're trying to take that from me. And, and, like, I think this movie is an interesting example of him saying, like, this pain is the, quote, gift that I got. Yeah. Let me represent it well. Because I, like, like I do think, yeah, his father isn't just a monster. He's never reduced to a monster in this movie. But there is something very heavy about it. And the, the humor of the movie is kind of at odds with that heaviness in a way that sat, feels like what it would be like to be around this person all the time when you're a little kid. Yeah. Um, like there's a scene in particular where uh, Shia LaBeouf has a, a his son. It, it's so hard to know whether I'm talking about the actor or the character. I, I'm just going to say <laughs> Otis. I'm, I'm going to use the character name. Uh, so Otis has a person in the Big Brother program who is kind of like a surrogate father figure because his parents are split up and his dad had been out of the picture for a while. Um, and there's a meeting that happens between Otis's father and uh, Tom, the big brother. And that conversation goes on for maybe like four or five minutes where it's just rapid fire. I'm a man. Let me size you up. Let me make small talk with you. We're going to talk about cars. We're going to talk about engines. We're going to talk about your job. But there's like this kind of suffocating aspect to it where you just know like something is going to go wrong like yeah. we're in the presence of a person that can't be trusted and i don't know i kind of felt what it would feel like to be a kid and know that your one guardian in life is like not to be trusted <laughs> and oh, you like like the boiling over sort of feeling exactly. that like, like you're, the, yeah. the feeling that you're always putting out a fire or trying to preempt a fire that's about to happen. And like, you never get to just relax and be a kid because you're nurturing this, this ego that is there that even when it's like smiling and laughing and telling funny jokes, um, yeah. you know, it's always one or two moves away from being something more volatile instead. Uh, and I, I just thought that was a really interesting, complicated portrait that I don't feel like I've seen in a movie before. Like I haven't seen a character quite like that. So I yeah, I really appreciated it. And the movie is definitely also very funny. Like surprisingly, yeah. there's lots of laughable moments. Like he's especially with the meta aspect of like Shia playing his own dad, like he kind of pokes a lot of fun at his father and the the grandiose way that he talks about his life and then the like a really emotional moment will be followed by just like the world's dumbest joke the next. Yeah, yeah. And the audience is just like so happy to get to laugh at it. Well, yeah, you, you really get a sense of who the father character is and likely the father in real life was. Um, and you feel just from those little act interactions and the jokes that he makes, you you feel like you understand him. And like you're like, you're like okay, cool. I, I totally get this guy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you do, you do see him like in some of those outbursts that he has, like it's, it's in the trailer, there's like the out, outburst where he just like walks on stage and like orders him to get off. And he's like child labor laws. And he's just like, he's like, he's trying to look out for his kid and protect him, but he's also like sort of being a dick at the same time. Yeah. But, it's like, he's trying to do that, but more than that, he's trying to be the sort of person who would look out for his kid. Yeah. yeah. And that, what kind of person am I like eclipses anything about the kid and just turns him into an asshole. <laughs> yeah. And it's all, it's also funny too, to see like, in looking at the youngest version of Otis's character, um, you see that in the early stages, he must have really, really been excited and, and, and enjoyed the acting world. There, there's a scene where his parents are having a fight mm -hmm. and it's the usual, it's, it's like the, the, the classical scenario where like, like the mother character would be like, can you tell your father that he's being an asshole? And then, but instead he chooses to like deliver the lines as those, like the characters of his parents. Yeah. It, it was, it's just a really fun moment where you can see like 
the joy of like this situation is uncomfortable, so I'm going to turn it into uh, like a fun little game for mm-hmm. me as I try to play act yeah. through this fight that my parents are having. And it's just like you can only do that if you're like you enjoy that work. Exactly, so. and that's kind of like the meta story of the movie too, right? It's like playing roles and like the the joy of portraying something even when it's hurtful and it like like multiple times otis in this movie mostly lucas hedges adult otis who feels like he basically walked off the set of mid 90s and just kept being angry (laughs) um he he says things like i'm acting everything is acting everyone is acting all the time and it feels like those like layers and layers are kind of what shia is trying to peel away but he's also like having fun not peeling them away at the same time like it it reminds me of like all the performance art and stuff that he used to do, like where people would just look at him and they'd be encouraged to stare at him and mock him for hours at a time. And like, he really seems to get something out of like, I know I have problems. Let's turn that into art and let's yeah. like find, find some joy in acting it out for each other. Um, yeah. It's just a really, really cool experiment. And it's one where like, I think the story of the movie just makes it like, endlessly entertaining and like compelling to watch oh yeah for sure yeah and nowhere near as hugely heavy as something like the tale like this is a movie that is much more happy to like hit some strong difficult emotional moments but always have a sense of levity right after and like it's allowed to be as complicated as his father which i think is just really interesting yeah yeah cool well should we get to official verdicts yep all right, Stephen, if you were going to give this a must-see, recommend with a caveat, wait for rental, pass with a caveat, or a must-avoid, what would you give it? Uh, this is an easy must-see for me. It's just a thousand percent up my alley. Yep, it's a must-see for me as well. As I said, it may have spoiled some other things for the rest of the festival, but I'm still pleasantly optimistic about uh, how things are going to be going. Um, but yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with it, and I think um, given this is going to go wide... Um, <laughs> <laughs> everybody should uh check it out yeah cool well that is going to do it for a review of honey boy uh steven miller if people want to find you throughout the week where can they do that people can go to twitter.com slash s david miller or s david miller.com people can find me at christopher in real life.com or twitter.com slash christopher irl you can find the podcast over at the spoiler where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show um if you want to subscribe to the show you can do so in overcast stitcher apple podcasts or wherever podcasts are found if you want to know when the episodes go live, you can follow us at twitter.com slash spoiler warning, facebook.com slash the spoiler warning, or instagram.com slash the spoiler warning. Um, if you want to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at the spoiler warning.com, or you can use the contact form on our site. Um, but yeah, we're going to take off and we have another few reviews to record. Um, so we will see you in a bit. Bye. This is Canadian content, and it's time we take credit for it. Starting now. Oh, oh. Canada!